Have you been watching the Weather Channel and hearing these terms high pressure and low pressure and wondering what in the world does that mean and what kind of weather should I expect? Well, hang out with me for just a couple minutes and I'm going to show you a really cool and simple illustration that'll help you know what high and low pressure is and what kind of weather to expect. Now to make things really obvious, we're going to create a high pressure and a low pressure system in a fish tank. Since water and air are both fluids, that's things with molecules that can flow around, they kind of act in similar ways. So for today's demonstration, we're going to imagine that the water is actually the atmosphere. In order to create a high pressure region, I'm going to need to cool the atmosphere over on one side of the fish tank. I will do this by adding some ice. As the molecules of a fluid cool, their movement slows and they move closer together, becoming more dense. Now you may not realize it, but gravity is always pulling down on air molecules. This is why our atmosphere does not fly off into space. And under the pull of gravity, a cooler and denser part of the atmosphere becomes heavier than the surrounding air. And therefore, it begins to fall towards the surface. And this heavier falling air mass applies more pressure to the surface of the Earth beneath it. So a weather station near Cruella would register high pressure. In order to create a low pressure region, I'm going to need to warm the atmosphere over on the other side of the fish tank. I'm going to do this by placing a rock that I've heated up in a pot of boiling water into the fish tank. As the molecules of a fluid heat up, they speed up and move farther apart, becoming less dense. Since this area of the atmosphere is not as heavy now as the area around it, the air will begin to rise. A weather station near Goofy would be registering low pressure as it sits under this lighter, rising air mass. Think I'm just making all of this up? Well, watch as I add some food coloring so you can actually see what is going on in our model atmosphere. The blue food coloring floats down with the denser and colder fluid. This heavier falling part of the atmosphere would create high pressure at the surface of the Earth. On the other side, the red food coloring moves upward with the warm and less dense fluid. This lighter rising part of the atmosphere creates low pressure at the surface of the Earth. Now what kind of weather systems would high pressure and low pressure tend to bring? Let's use our model and a little bit of what we know about air temperature and how that affects how much moisture the air can hold to figure this out. In low pressure regions, warmer air that often contains more water vapor rises up. As it reaches the cooler places high in the atmosphere, the water vapor condenses back into liquid, creating clouds and sometimes rain. For this reason, low pressure will often bring cloudy or rainy conditions. On the other hand, high pressure regions have denser and cooler air falling towards the earth. This cooler and drier air in the high pressure regions usually brings clear and sunny weather. One easy way to remember this is with the simple alliteration, high happy, low lousy. When the pressure is high, we get happy or sunny weather. And when the pressure is low, we get lousy. Think clouds and rainy weather. 
As a final note, the tool that measures atmospheric pressure is called a barometer. As you can see, when the pressure is high, the weather is predicted to be nice, and when the pressure is low, you can expect the opposite. It's fun to get one of these so you can watch for yourself how the changes in pressure are related to the conditions you see in the atmosphere. So there you have it. You're a high and low pressure pro. Have a great day, and as always, stay curious, my friends.